हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर इम्तियाज़ हसन फ्रॉम जामिया मिल्ल इस्लामिया एस सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी न्यू डेली सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द मॉड्यूल इंट्रोडक्शन प्रिंसिपल एंड टाइप्स ऑफ सेंटिफिकेशन इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी डिस्कस द फॉलोइंग थिंग्स इन डिटेल्स द सेंटिफिकेशन एंड इट्स प्रिंसिपल सो वट आर द process of centrifugation what are the centrifuge and how it works what are the basic principle of centrifugation procedure the second component is the theory of operation like the how what are the theory behind it what are the basic science behind it and the third part is the centrifugal force that describes that what are the centrifugal force its mathematical expression and its physical application so how the centrifugal force is applied to a particle while its centrifugation and these molecules are separated during the centrifugation process then the types of rotors we will describe in detail because there are two different types of rotor their advantage their disadvantage what are the choices when you have to use which kind of rotor that has to be described in detail and the last part is the types of centrifuge like which what kind of centrifuge based on its size based on its uh, speed based on its application so all these detail we are going to provide in detail so now let us discuss with the first is the what is the centrifugation or the centrifugation procedure so the material or particles in a solution can be separated by a centrifuge that used in principle for the centrifugation so the basic principle of centrifugation that if you put something in a test tube it tries to settle during due to the force of gravitation applied to it but the force of gravitation is too low so the particle have tendency to settle at a very very low speed during the and hence it takes a very very longer time of course the force applied to this is g is depends upon its mass so the total force is mg but if you put the same thing in a centrifugation tube and then centrifuge in a axis like the through the centrifuge that is the piece of equipment which generally driven by a motor that puts an object in a rotation around the fixed axis and applying a force perpendicular to the axis so the centrifuge is working on the sedimentation principle so once it will be centrifuge it actually increases the force applied to it and that's why the molecules it gets a very long time to to settle down it it the process becomes very very fast while the centrifugation so the separation tendency is depends upon the speed of the centrifugation process that is the controlled by the rotor controlled by the motor so the molecules are separated that depends upon the sedimentation coefficient of the molecule which describes the the rate at which the micromolecule sediment under a defined gravitational for, force which is influenced by the molecular weight of the substance and the shape and the shape of the micromolecule so if the molecular weight is very high then the molecules got settled very easily if the molecular weight is small it settles slowly so all the molecules of the different in size are settled at the different velocity or at the different time during the centrifugation process that is the basic principle used to operate the centrifugation process for the centrifugation of my different types of molecule during the separation so now we will discuss about the history of centrifugation technology so the it was the first time invented by the english military engineer benjamin robbins and who invented a whirling arm apparatus to determine the viscous drag so from that time this machine was invented and due to time to time advancement this machine got more and more advanced in 1864 antony pandal invented the first dairy centrifuge in order to separate the cream from the milk and this technology is still used for the separation of butter or cream from the milk so from the time to time advancement this machine got more and more advanced so in 1879 gustav de laval demonstrated the first continuous centrifugation separator and then he made it available for the commercial application we will discuss about the principle of operation of this centrifugation technology so you sure you are already aware that the centrifuge is a piece of equipment which is generally driven by an electric motor that puts an object in rotation around the fixed axis and applying a force perpendicular to the axis to separate the substance of the different densities tubes in the centrifugal 
fuse are tilted so the centrifuge can pull the denser substance towards the bottom and the thinner substance or lighter substance at the top so there must be a force and there is an equation which derives that the how the force acts on the molecule it is given r as the rcf equals to r into omega square divided by the g where r is the distance of the molecule from the center of the axis of the rotation and w is the angular velocity which indicates that how fast this is rotating and the g is the gravity the force that is a 9.8 meter per second square so we are discussing about again further elaborating that there are two kind of force acting on a molecule one force that is the centrifugal force that we discussed the centrifugal force is equals to m omega square r so m is the mass of the molecule it means that the centrifugal force is directly proportional to the mass of the molecule then it is the directly proportional to the square of the angular velocity and third is the radius so the radius is also an essential factor which decide that how the force centrifugal force acts on the molecule but not only the centrifugal force is acting on the molecule apart from that there are some frictional forces also acting on the molecule which is governed by the molecule or water present inside the tube so the frictional force is given as frictional f is proportional to the small f and to v so the v is the velocity relative to the centrifuge tube and f is the frictional coefficient that is the properties of molecule that decides that how much force acting on a particular molecule at a particular speed we are discussing about the you know that the people are thinking that as much as you can rotate the uh, centrifuge at the particular speed so the actual force acting is not directly proportional to the rpm that is the rotation per minute but it is actually the force perceived by the molecule is measured in the rcf value so this is known as relative centrifugal force so actually if you take the different size of the tube or the length of the tube is deferred so the rcf force acting on that on the substance is deferred that's why instead of taking rpm rotation per minute people use the rcf value and there is a particular a, there is a well defined correlation between the rcf and rpm value which was given as a equation that is the rcf equals to 11.18 multiplied by r r is the radius of the of the tube uh, rotor and then multiplied by rpm divided by 1000 whole square so that is actually factor that decides the actual force acting on the molecule instead of taking rpm as a parameter for the separation of molecule for example a sample is rotating at 20000 rpm and the radius of the tube or you can say of the rotor is the 7 cm then it will actually experience the rcf of 33000 g so you can you can see that it directly depends upon the radius and the rpm and there is a direct correlation between the rf rpm and rcf you can see as earlier i explained that there are two kind of force acting on the molecule when we are centrifuging in a tube so actually there are two these two forces are the friction the one is the centrifugal force that is acting outward you can see that the outward side it is the pushing the molecule outward towards the center of the rotation of axis but in the same time the buoyant force are also acting on the molecule and that is the opposite to the centrifugal force so the actually the centrifugal force is equals to the buoyant force plus frictional force so the actual force acting on the molecule is just no is this better described by the stokes equation and the stokes equation states that the the sedimentation velocity is proportional to the d square into rho p minus rho l divided by 18 mu g so v is the sedimentation velocity at which the molecule sediments at the end at the tip of the tube and the, rho p is the density of the particle and rho l is the density of the medium or it is the density of the liquid and d is the diameter of the particle g is the centrifugal force that is the, and the mu is the viscosity of medium so you can see that the actual sedimentation velocity is depends upon the size of the particle difference in the density of the particle with respect to the medium and the viscosity of the medium so these all factors actually decide the sedimentation velocity of a molecule during the centrifugation process 
from the Stokes equation, the five important behavior of the particle can be explained. First, the rate of particle sedimentation is proportional to the size of the particle. Means, greater the size, the force applied to it or the sedimentation velocity will be very high. So, the particle got settled very easily or very fast as compared to the particle of the small size. So, it the first law or you can say the first part is that the rate of the particle sedimentation is proportional to the size increasing the size increasing the velocity increasing the decreasing the size decreasing the velocity the second part is the sedimentation rate is proportional to the difference in density between the medium and the particle it is very very critical points that can separate the molecule during the centrifugation process so if the higher the difference in the density easier to separate if the lesser in the difference in the density between the particle and the medium it is it takes more time to get it separated the third part is the sedimentation rate is zero when the particle density is same as the medium density of course if the two things are equal then the density of the particle minus the density of the liquid medium equals to zero and everything is something multiplied by zero becomes zero so there is no separation occurs in the, the fourth part is that the sedimentation rate decreases at the viscosity of the medium increases because the viscosity of medium has great influence on the particle separation you can see as the viscous the medium it, it generates more viscous force or you can say more frictional force that's why the speed of the settling velocity becomes more lesser and lesser as increase the viscosity of the medium and the fifth part is the sedimentation rate increases as the gravitational force increases so it is directly proportional to the gravitational force so of course gravitational force having the direct role in the sedimentation of particle during the centrifugation process so the stokes law clearly verifies that give a physical correlation between and the mathematical expression of the molecules behavior of molecules during the centrifugation process and what are the factors that is actually acting on the separation of molecules during the centrifugation process we already discussed that the there is a conversion between the rcf value into the rpm and it is given by the equation that the rcf equals to 11.18 multiplied by the radius of the tube and radius of the rotor multiplied by q by thousand whole square if you want to convert the rpm into rcf into rpm then this equation is used that the this rpm which is given here as a q equals to 299 into the rcf divided by r under root so these two equation are used for the interconversion from the rcf to rpm here you can see the a basic simple diagram of the modern centrifuge so to run a centrifuge you must have a power source so if you can see here there is power source and then power source is further distributed through a power distribution system to the to control the different component of the centrifuge the first component is the motor where it can if the rotors are fitted to centrifuge the molecule the here you can see the timer that is actually controls you should define that at how long the centrifuge and process should be done so accordingly the timer will decides the at what time the molecule should be run or the centrifugation can be done you can see here the safety switch if there is any problem in the centrifugation process then the safety switch blinks so you can should you should take care of the equipment and you can see here the led in indicator which indicates the velocity or you can see the time and every things what are the process going on it should give you the live picture of everything running inside the centrifuge so this diagram clearly shows that how internal picture of the centrifuge that is not can seen from the outside it is just packed inside the system now we i will tell you that what are the things we are going to discuss in this module the first part we will discuss about the what are the types of rotor because there are different types of rotor used for the different purpose during the centrifugation process so you must have the idea about what are the different types of rotor like the fixed angle rotor swinging bucket rotor and vertical rotor then the second part we will discuss about the types of centrifuge that is based on the speed and it is classified into three different groups that is the low speed centrifuge high speed centrifuge and ultra centrifuge in the third section we will discuss about the 
principle of centrifugation based on the principal types of centrifuge that is the differential centrifugation, preparative centrifugation and analytical centrifugation. So first we will discuss about the types of rotor. Basically there are two types of rotor. One is the swinging bucket rotor. You can see here that it is actually a, you can see it is in the axis of perpendicular axis but once it starts the rotating it becomes the parallel to the axis of the rotation. So you can see here directly since the there is increase in the diameter so it is the used for the separation of the molecule where you need a high radius. The other part is the fixed angle rotor that is the most widely used rotor and they have the angle of rotation is the fixed and you can see here the pellet are collected at the end of tube after the completion of the centrifugation. Further elaboration of the fixed angle rotor and you can see that the geometry of the rotor. So there are three axis of radi radius to be measured. One is the you can see at the top it is the radius minimum because it is the very very close to the axis of rotation while at the tip it is the radius maximum which is the far away from the axis of the rotation and in the third is the average. So people are usually considering the R average for the consideration or the calculation of the all parameter which is related to the radius of the rotation. You can see here in the case of swinging bucket rotor that the radius is very there are again there are three types of radius but it the radius is very high as compared to is more as compared to the radius of the fixed angle rotor. So this picture will give you the idea that how these two ang two types of rotors are differed from each other. Further elaboration of the fixed angle rotor and you can see that the geometry of the rotor. So there are three axis of radi radius to be measured. One is the you can see at the top it is the radius minimum because it is the very very close to the axis of rotation while at the tip it is the radius maximum which is the far away from the axis of the rotation and in the third is the average. So people are usually considering the R average for the consideration or the calculation of the all parameter which is related to the radius of the rotation. You can see here in the case of swinging bucket rotor that the radius is very there are again there are three types of radius but it, the radius is very high as compared to is more as compared to the radius of the fixed angle rotor. So this picture will give you the idea that how these two, ang two types of rotors are differed from each other. When you use different types of rotor the same molecules in the different rotors so the rotor having great impact on the separation of molecule therefore we have to consider the k factor of the rotors for the separation process so the k factor is actually the measure of time taken for a particle to sediment through a sucrose density gradient it, this k factor is mainly applied for the density gradient centrifugation so it is actually the measure of time taken for a particle to sediment through the sucrose gradient. The most efficient rotor which operates at a high RCF and have a low sedimentation path length therefore have the lowest K factor. So it is actually the measures of the RCF versus the path length of the tube. The, the centrifugation time T and K factors for two different rotors for example rotor 1 and rotor 2 are related by T1 time taken for in the one rotor is equals to the K factor K1 into T2 time taken for the T2 to second rotor divided by the K factor of the second rotor. So there is a very good correlation between the time and the K factor of the rotor. So you, if you worked on one types of rotor, it can be applied for the second type of rotor. So therefore, the K factor is essential measure for the say the particle that sediment through a density gradient centrifugation process. Now we will discuss the types of centrifuge based on the speed. So the first it is classified into three groups. One is the low speed centrifugation, which have the maximum speed limit of the fifteen thousand rpm. The second is the high speed centrifuge which having the maximum limits of the 80,000 rpm and the third is the ultra centrifuge which have very very high speed and that is the more than 1 lakhs. You can see the picture of all the three types of the, of the centrifuge. Apart from that the centrifuge comes with the different advanced feature 
like the variable temperature there in that kind of centrifuge you have you have option to control the temperature there is vacuum capability to control the pressure of the system so these two are the add-on feature of the centrifuge we discuss about the detail of the low speed centrifuge it is also called microfluid or clinical or tabletop bench top centrifuge it operates at the maximum speed of 15000 rpm it is most widely used in the laboratory and it operates at the room temperature this kind of system usually don't have temperature control system there are both two types of rotors are can be used in this type of centrifuge like the fixed angle and the swinging bucket commonly it used for the rapid separation for the coarse particle like the rbc from the blood dna from the protein the sample is centrifuge until the particles are tightly packed into the pallet of the bottom and then the liquid portion or supernatant is separated it comes with the rotor of the different size to accommodate the different number of tubes inside the centrifugation so this is a detail all about the low speed centrifuge we are going to discuss about the high speed centrifuge it attains a maximum speed of 80000 rpm but we usually avoid to reach at the 80000 rpm we usually run at the lower speed and it is often refrigerated because and requires vacuum to operate because at the high temperature the 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 chance of the burning and also you need the vacuum to operate because in the case of air it uh, the frictional force increases the temperature of the system that's why these two things are compulsory to run the high speed centrifuge it also comes with the both types of rotor like the fixed angle rotor and swinging bucket rotor can be used it is generally used to separate micromolecule protein or nucleic acid during purification or preparative work it can be used to estimate the sedimentation coefficient and the molecular weight of the particle but it is not having no optical system to read out the process of centrifugation it also having the different size of the rotor depending on what are the requirements so you can add what amount of volume you want to use so accordingly the different rotor are selected to use in the high speed centrifuge we are going to discuss about the ultra centrifugation technique it is the most advanced form of the centrifuge in the latter part we will we'll discuss in more detail and the principle and everything here we are going to give a brief description about the ultra centrifuge it is very specialized and highly expensive it is used precisely to determine the sedimentation coefficient and molecular weight of the molecules molecular shape protein protein interaction and they have a wide number of application it works at a very high speed more than 1 lakh rpm and uses a small sample size rather than the, in the other case you find you can use 10 ml 20 ml and even 100 ml here you can use usually less than 1 ml sample and it uses relatively a small sample mostly for the analytical purpose although it comes also in the form of preparative centrifuge it is the most advanced component of this system is the inbuilt optical system so you can analyze the movement of molecule during the centrifugation process as well that is the most advanced feature of the ultra centrifuge and that is used for the biologically the determination of biological properties and physical properties of a molecule that has to be analyzed centrifugation process is a very risky technique also so if the students are not familiar with all these steps that is utilized for the centrifugation of a molecule there is chance of the accident so to avoid any such accident to avoid any error to avoid any kind of problem during the centrifugation process there is a certain parameter safety measure that has to be taken in consideration before starting the centrifuge first you should take once once you want to do the centrifugation first of all you should read a owner manual every equipment every supplier give you a manual that how to operate a system any types of centrifuge there should be an owner's manual so every students or everyone have suggested to must read the manual before starting the centrifugation process second do not operate a centrifuge until have been shown proper use by an experienced operator because a new per person may ignore many things so you better to have a senior person from the lab or better to have an experienced person with you who can guide you at the initial level once you are familiar with all these things two or three times then you can run alone 
the third part is that the check the centrifuge chamber and drive spindle of rotor are free from scratches and burns so you should check that the chamber in which the rotor are fixed should be clean there should not be accumulation of some water or some any other thing there should not be any rusting and the, another thing that inside the rotor sometimes salts are got accumulated during the spill, spill of the of the substance from the test tube from the centrifuge tube so you have to regularly check that the whether is any accumulation of the salts inside it because it actually increase the weight of the rotor at one side and the other side is the lesser weight so it unbalance the rotor the fourth part is that the decontaminate centrifuge of biological hazardous before the servicing because sometimes you using the hazardous material then you must take care of the hazardous material it may harm you in the latter stage and then never attempt to touch or stop a spinning rotor by hand or any other tool or object it is better to while running you define the time that for what time you have to run this machine for example it is for 30 minutes just give the time for 30 minutes after 30 minutes it's automatically stop there is a break option in the high end centrifuge so if you are in hurry if you want to take the sample out just now so what you should do you should just press the break option so it will automatically stop the centrifuge after some time if you are listening some sound something error then better to use the stop button and the followed by the break button so the centrifuge automatically stop so these thing has to be taken care very very carefully otherwise the chance of the of the fatal in for fatal accident always usually a student what do they don't close the chamber properly inside inner chamber of the rotor so there should be also taken into account that the inner chamber the rotor should also be closed because if you don't close the rotor the chances of the accident again and close the rotor properly then close the whole equipment properly and check that if the everything is okay then you start the then you press the start button and be sure that you have to be around here around the machine while the centrifugation process is going on because if there is some alarm you have to immediately or just or turn off the machine so you should be around there these are the some safety manual that has to be taken in consideration while running the centrifugation machine we are going to discuss about the operation of the how to operate the centrifuge so before you must be familiar with all these things otherwise it is a very dangerous equipment if you are careless then you it cause very very fatal accidents so first of all place the tubes in a centrifuge then always use correct size of the tube to prevent tube damage then always use a counter balance system by by mass not by the volume people usually measure the volume and see it is equal but it actually depends on the mass so you have to better to weigh the both the tubes together and see that is it equal or not then put the tubes in opposite to each other if the centrifuge having variable speed then you must enter the rpm at which speed you want to run then you must close the lid then turn timer on and press start here we are going to discuss that the usually what are the common errors people do so first you can see here that you should place the tube in opposite to each other you can see here in the, in the last picture that the three th pictures so the first picture is showing the correct correct fitting of the tube however then in the second picture it is the wrong fitting so you must be careful that the tubes are placed opposite to each other so it should unbalance each other again the mass should be very very clear that the, both the tubes opposite to each other having equal mass and then you should close the lid to get any any problem you can see here the failure of an unbalanced centrifuge how harsh this uh, this uh, accident so to avoid all these thing, things you must be very very careful while putting the sample inside the centrifugation rotors and then close the lid and before the running you must be aware that everything is very very well defined then you can start the on button so there are some preventive maintenance of this equipment if you are not doing proper maintenance there are the chances of problem to be occur in the latter so better to have to be very clear about the maintenance of this machine like the lubricate and clean the motor 
from time to time then you clean the case also where you have or you can say the part where you have to put the rotor and all these things that chamber has to be very clean and especially when you turn off the machine the chances of the eye the there will is some ice is there so you have to check wait for the melting and then clean it properly then inspect power cord and plugs that it is thoroughly 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 switch thoroughly plugged uh, there should not be any loose plugs so it will be having the chance of the fire then inspect the control and switch it that whether it is properly uh, uh, it is working properly or not then ensure appropriate menu setting for the proper use and also ensure that the rotor should be tightly fitted otherwise there should be a chance of the accident and finally you check the lights and indicators that are showing the proper value at a proper time if everything is okay then you can run machine at it at your choice we are going to discuss that what are the common fellows during the centrifugation process like machine will not start so you should see you should check that is it power is fault or is it is the machine fault then safety switch or timer is not working properly motors are not working properly motors making noise sometimes rotor is broken sometimes lid is not open or closed so these are the very common failures now i will tell you what are the how to protect these things how to overcome this problem so if machine is not starting you must check that the power switches are properly on check the voltage through the multimeter that is any problem in the voltage sometimes the volt very high voltage or very low voltage also creates a problem then motors are making noise this is a very common problem because when people use the motor you use the rotor then there are some leakage and then leakage is just start uh, collecting inside the inside the rotor and after that the mass of the rotor is deferred at the deferred position that's why although you have properly measured the sample but due to the difference in the mass that causes the problem of the noise so you must clean the rotor before running the sample and sometimes lid is not open or sometimes lid is not closed so you see usually this happens in the case of of cooling centrifuge so if you cool for a longer time then everything becomes uh, very very stick so better to leave this sample this centrifuge at the room open the open the centrifuge and keep it at the room temperature after some time these things will be done properly so you just wait the system temperatures come to the room temperature give you the basic up outline for the troubleshooting that what are the problem and how to solve this certain problem this flow diagram describe all the way to run the centrifuge if you have certain problem then how to sort out you also verify that alarms are operating properly ensure that safety switches are functioning if refrigerated ensure temperature reading is okay because sometimes in inside temperature is different from the outside that's why you have to ensure that the inner temperature is indicated and replace or repair gasket seal and vacuum pumps if applicable so these all things should be taken in account for learning the centrifugation from time to time and these are the laboratory general maintenance and these all thing is also written in the manual so that's why i suggested you to read the manual carefully